In the last few months, there's been some really exciting discoveries about various black holes or black hole as a phenomenon, with several separate studies taking us a little bit closer to cracking the mystery of these very strange giants. And so in this video, I wanted to summarize some of these recent findings, including the findings that were really important in 2022. And so in this video, I wanted to summarize some of these discoveries, explain why they're important, but also discuss some of the previous major discoveries that have already transformed our understanding of black holes and why they are the way they are. So hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and let's discuss black holes. But let's maybe start with some of the previous discoveries from 2022 and early 2023 that we did discuss before, but I wanted to mention again because they're actually kind of important. For example, not so long ago, an unusual outburst of light revealed what seemed to be a definitive sign of intermediate mass black hole, possibly a few hundred thousand solar masses in total. And interestingly enough, it created so much radiation and so much light that it became much brighter than the entire galaxy, visible from as far as 850 million light years away from planet Earth. Essentially making this the first time an intermediate mass black hole could be directly analyzed through emissions. We also finally had the confirmation for the closest black hole to planet Earth, Gaia BH1, located about 1500 light years from our planet. But intriguingly, the previous candidate, HR6819, that's even closer, that was believed to be a black hole, turned out to be just a bunch of stars. More intriguingly, at a distance of 5000 light years away, there was a first confirmation for what's known as a rogue black hole, a black hole traveling completely by itself and not really emitting anything, in this case detected through gravitational lensing. But because we believe there are approximately 100 million such objects in the galaxy, to some extent it's still surprising that this is the first such discovery. And this black hole was actually traveling pretty fast, implying that it was maybe a result of some kind of a supernova explosion that gave it a boost. And then there was this object, something that was approximately 7000 times brighter than the entire Milky Way galaxy, a distant quasar with a black hole that's about 3 billion solar masses that seems to consume most matter ever seen. It basically destroys approximately one mass of planet Earth every single second, essentially making this the brightest quasar ever found, at least for now. I'm sure more will be discovered later. But as always, many of these discoveries raised more questions than provided answers. For example, how is such a black hole even possible? What makes it grow so massive and what makes it acquire such ridiculously powerful emissions? And some of the answers have been now found from recent studies. And one of these recent studies focused on what's known as Cipher galaxies. Galaxies with active galactic nuclei in the middle, but galaxies where you can still see the rest of the shape, including the arms and the structure of the rest of the galaxy. For quasars, it's quite the opposite. You only see the light coming from the accretion disk in the center. And specifically, the scientists behind this recent study you can find in the description focused on what's known as narrow line C for 1 galaxies, also known as NLS1. Galaxies that often contain very small but usually rapidly growing black hole that could maybe answer some of these potential questions. And so for this recent study, Japanese scientists used what's known as VERA, a Japanese network of radio telescopes that allowed them to assess polarization in various growing active galaxies, specifically focusing on gas density, the strength of the magnetic field inside these objects, and thus the overall activity of gas and plasma around the black hole, with the main discovery and the main conclusion implying that all of these young galaxies generally have a lot more abundant gas than a typical more developed, more massive black hole, with the calculations showing that the gas here can definitely grow black holes to billions of solar masses in just a few hundred million years. But also discovering that a lot of dynamic gravitational forces interacting with magnetic forces can actually generally cause a lot of matter in a galaxy, including a lot of molecular clouds, to fall toward the center, thus creating more stars and thus feeding the black hole even more. Essentially implying that this is a kind of a feedback mechanism that seems to happen in these very young galaxies with young massive black holes growing extremely fast. They basically cause the rest of the galaxy to feed them even more. And this is actually related to a separate study on UFOs. In this case, UFOs stand for ultra-fast outflows, extremely powerful space winds emerging from various supermassive black holes that very often move ridiculously fast. Something that seems to be absolutely crucial when it comes to evolving galaxies and supermassive black holes. And so, in a separate study, by taking a look at 22 active galactic nuclei, it was discovered that at least a third of them, 
possessed very fast winds, moving up to 30% of speed of light. With winds of this velocity, it's quite uncertain what this does to the rest of the galaxy and how it affects star formation. But it definitely changes galaxies in a lot of different ways, potentially shutting them down completely or maybe once again encouraging the feeding of the black hole in the center. The actual effects are still not entirely clear, but it does make you wonder what actually happens in these galaxies and if they can ever have star formation or planetary formation afterwards. Do they basically just become dead giants? With the other important question, or I guess implication from this being, in regards to our own galaxy and the black hole you see right here, Sagittarius A star. In comparison to a lot of other black holes out there, it is relatively small, so it's unable to produce these UFOs, ultra-fast outflows. And we know that our galaxy is filled with new stars, star formation, planets, and of course planet Earth. So maybe this is part of the equation for forming stability in order for a galaxy to support life. And so maybe these active UFO galaxies just basically remain empty for most of their lifetime. I mean, for now this is just speculation, but it is an intriguing question to ask. But we now have several discoveries from the James Webb showing us even more distant black holes, such as this record holder Sears 1019, that in theory will allow us to explain some of these mysteries sometimes in the next few years. This is a relatively recent discovery, so we don't really know much about it just yet except for the fact that this black hole existed when the universe was only 570 million years old. But not all discoveries were about massive black holes. We also had some discoveries about solar mass black holes that are usually much smaller in size. The black holes whose collisions we've been detecting since 2015. And one of the more interesting theoretical studies recently was actually in regards to that final collision. We know that during that moment, the black hole generally receives quite a kick depending on the angle of collision. With at least one previous detection, very likely resulting in a black hole moving at 1500 km per second. But the theory behind this predicted that it can actually reach maybe the speed of 5000 km per second. So the question was, how fast can they go at the end? What's maybe the maximum we can find for a black hole moving across the universe somewhere out there? And the answer is a little bit mind-boggling. Coming from this study by James Healy and Carlos Lusto. And so here, by using a supercomputer and performing 1,381 simulations, they discovered that there is a way for a black hole to reach speeds of about 28,562 km per second, over 10% of the speed of light. And if such a black hole one day passed through the solar system, it would most likely come completely unannounced and would be gone within just a few days, although technically still pulling on some planets for weeks and months to come. But detecting such an object in a galaxy would be practically impossible. It would actually pass in front of stars so quickly that even gravitational lensing would maybe last a few seconds at most, and finding something like this would be very, very challenging. But apart from the study on black hole collisions, there was another one in regards to the unusual frequencies they generate when they collide. Here we're talking about what the scientists refer to as chirps, very specific frequencies detectable by LIGO. Now, in the last few years, we've discovered approximately 70 such chirps, but we're going to be discovering hundreds and hundreds more in the next few years. And what scientists actually analyze here is the most likely frequency we're going to find. Because based on previous observations, it looks like most black holes tend to generate something relatively similar. So if converted to auditory waves, this type of frequency is audible to human ear. But many previous studies assumed that black holes will probably come in different masses thus generating a lot of random frequencies. This new study kind of disagrees, and mostly based on the formation of many of these black hole binaries that very often involve what's known as envelope stripping, removing of the outer shell from the partner, which then results in a supernova. And strangely enough, there seems to be a kind of a peak for a lot of different masses. For example, there seems to be a universal mass of 9 and 16 solar masses that seems to be pretty common. But there's a major gap for black holes 10 to 12 solar masses and more peaks at 8 and 14 solar masses, implying that certain black hole collisions are just way more common than others, which by itself then suggests certain frequencies as being way more common. And if you think of this as a kind of a cosmic music or gravitational waves of the universe, there are going to be certain frequencies occurring a lot more than anything else. This, by the way, sort of relates to the previous video on the unusual hum in the entire universe discovered not so long ago. That video should be in the description. And last but not least, there were some additional discoveries from a very well-known microquasar. In this case, a microquasar is basically a small black hole that tends to produce very similar effects to a much larger black hole like a quasar. 
but this is often a result of a massive partner nearby. Basically, this black hole steals a lot of the mass from the partner, forming massive emissions. Now, this quasar is really well known, GRS-1915-105, the most massive stellar black hole in the Milky Way, and essentially the first official black hole discovered in 1992. It spins ridiculously fast, approximately 950 times per second, which is almost at the limit of maximum speed, and it could be up to 18 solar masses in mass. It also exhibits this very famous phenomenon known as superluminal motion, where the jets appear to be moving at several times the speed of light. But that's actually just a result of an angle, and in reality, the jets are only moving at about 90% of speed of light. There's a video in the description that sort of explains this more. And so now we have a new discovery coming from the Chinese Fast Telescope that accidentally discovers unusual radio frequencies that don't seem to be periodic and instead appear once in a while. Here the frequency is about 5 Hz, or basically seems to occur every 0.2 seconds. And though it wasn't at first clear exactly what's happening here, because it's not something we usually see from black holes, it's now believed to be a result of misalignment between the spin axis of the black hole and the accretion disk. And so as the black hole drags all of the space-time behind it, the accretion disk starts to wobble 5 times per second, producing these unusual radio emissions. So it's sort of doing this. At least that's the main explanation for now. But because this is such an exciting object, we're going to be discussing it in a separate video sometimes in the future. So if you would like to learn more, make sure to subscribe. But at least for now, those are the main discoveries I wanted to mention in regards to various types of black holes. And so until future videos, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this here on Patreon by joining general membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.